Okay, so now um, we've finished doing the initial copying of the files and it is ready to uh, reboot um, and actual com uh, com actually complete the installation. So, first thing we need to do is disconnect the floppy. And when that's done, just press return and the machine will start to reboot. If you don't want to wait the 10 seconds, you can just press enter. But if this happens, what it is doing is asking us for the disk which contains these drivers, because they're not standard on the CD. So all we do is we mount the custom floppy drivers disk again, or whichever driver disk you use to take these drivers on. Once it is connected, just press 1, and it will continue. It will ask for these disks again. So if you are using an actual physical floppy disk for this, keep it handy. So here we are. Now if you're doing this on VMware, things will get slightly annoying because the mouse is, well, hotted because of the way the mouse drivers now work inside VMware. What will happen is after a while your mouse will become completely uncontrollable. So what we do here now is we're going to add, until we can get um, the correct VMware driver installed, we are going to start by adding the generic VGA driver. If your device is SVGA compliant, you can use the generic VB, uh, SVGA driver. Or if you have a graphics card that can do Visa, you can download um, a Visa driver which you can use. To do that, first of all, you have to use the default VGA driver and then install the VBE driver later on. So we're going to leave it as default and we're going to press done. So for now, we've got the default VGA driver, we've got the mouse driver. If you're installing off a SCSI setup, then the default SCSI driver will appear here. But for VMware, this is enough. So we just save it. It will restart the Windows Server, then it will present us with a list of packages to install. If you want to save space, you can remove the languages you don't need. English will be always installed by default. If you don't plan on doing any advanced networking, such as file sharing, you can take off Samba and it's probably wise to take off netware to save space unless you have a netware server. If you plan to do any printing you can leave the printer uh, postscript printer definition files and the image setter postscript printer definition files on the server um, on the installation. But that's entirely up to you. And this is telling us that there is a 2 gig disk and the disk space required is 427 meg. So we can see that we have a fair chunk remaining for OS 4.2 developer or for any applications if need be. So this is going to take a long time. Again I will pause the, um, the video and pick it up once this part is finished. Okay, so now it's finished copying the OpenStep packages uh, from the HHDD VVD BBD to the uh, hard disk. So now what you want to do is, again, make sure that you eject or disconnect the floppy, and then just restart.
Okay, for this, you just set the language of your keyboard. So in this case, I'm going for UK. And congratulations, you have successfully installed OpenStep 4.2. Next series of videos I shall be doing will be looking at the post installation on OpenStep, um, such as patching for the uh, year 2000 uh, bug, and also installing any ancillary drivers that would be required for you to use OpenStep for, well, any great length of time. So please stay tuned, I hope you, this uh, video has proved useful for you. And if you want to know more, feel free to browse my other videos. Thank you.